This Rev3 Games preview is brought to you by Audible. Hey guys, Max and Tara here. We are at PAX Prime 2013. Well, sort of. We are at a bar that has having a, a top secret uh, PlayStation indie gathering. And we just got a chance to play a whole bunch of indie games on the PlayStation Vita. Yeah, I haven't had a ton of experience with a Vita because I don't own one, but I always enjoy playing Vita games. And they had some really awesome indie titles here this year. The first one was a game called Hohokum. Uh, which is so adorable. I had never heard of this game before. I wasn't really sure what to expect at all. I saw our shooter playing it and I was like, give me that Vita, I have to play this right now. And it's basically just an exploration game. It looks beautiful, it has a really unique art style, very colorful, and you play as a snake called the Long Mover. And you basically use the analog stick to move the snake around, and the, the more you wiggle the stick, he'll move faster, but you can, al you can also uh, use the two buttons to make him go faster or slower. And it's kind of like a puzzle game because there are things in the environment that you completely don't understand at all because nothing makes sense. But when you do things a certain way, like maybe say there's clouds in the sky and you punch out all of the clouds, something happens in the game. It's something that you weren't expecting and it unlocks like a new area or something. And it's, it's just amazingly awesome. And it's such a happy game. Huh. It's such a happy, pretty game. No, I've, I've seen this in action. It, it looks like Snake crossed with... Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. Like it's just yeah. it's very colorful. So there's there's no like there's no scoring, there's no like unlocking. No, no scores, no tutorials. I mean there's a little bit of a tutorial, I guess. Uh, but there's no like points, no time limit or anything. Like it's just go nuts, have fun, and look at pretty things while you do it. Okay, well that sounds kind of uh, kind of on par with something that I played, which was Doki Doki Universe. Which is one of those games. It, well, well, uh, Ho Hokum sounds like it's it's difficult to describe because there's, it's it's very much experiencing yeah. it. Uh, Doki Doki Universe is is difficult to describe because it has a lot going on. Uh, essentially, you play as uh, a robot who's supposed to, supposed to take care of a human family, but then the human family family leaves, and then an alien shows up, and then you basically have to prove your humanity as a robot by helping other people. It sounds like I'm stoned and making this up, uh, but the game is, if I had to describe it, it's a combination of the uh, trading sequences in uh, in Zelda Link's Awakening. So it, you basically are, are, are finding different items to give to different people. Okay. You, you go to these little planets, which are kind of like little prints. Like you go down these little planets and you go talk to these these people, and everyone has these different problems, which has almost like a scribble knots kind of vibe to it. Yeah, like you have a conversation. I that, yeah. Yeah. So you have a conversation with somebody, and you meet like a, a cactus, for instance, who wants to see dolphins, but he's a cactus. So okay. how do you, you have to go and find somebody who has dolphins and you bring the dolphins to the cactus. Again, I sound, I sound so high right now, no, but it's this is totally like, I feel like there's an ongoing theme now, especially with a lot of PlayStation titles where like people put out games that don't make any sense whatsoever, but they're so freaking enjoyable that like it just works, you know? Uh, the other Vita game that I checked out was Metrico, which you described to me as a bar graph game, which I don't think quite did it justice. Um, it's actually like a really intense puzzle game. And yeah, it looks like there are bar graphs in it. Um, it also has that kind of like popular indie style to it where like everything is clear cut, but bright colors and just, it's beautiful. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that uh, there, it's like a platforming puzzle game, but as you move and do things, the platforms will move with you. So like sometimes in order to raise a platform, you have to jump but you don't want to jump too much or you'll raise the platform too high and you won't be able to jump to it. It's like, it's again, uh, a game that's really hard to explain unless you experience it, but I gotta say like based on my 10 or 15 minutes of time with it, like this has the potential to be one of the best puzzle games I've ever played. Like I was in awe at how much it made me think and do things that I didn't realize were possible. Well, damn. Uh, another game I played, uh, which is much easier to describe than these these three other ones was Luftrausers, which is uh, Vlambeer's uh, it's their shmup. Yeah. It's their it's their aerial shoot 'em up. You are a uh, you're a plane and you fly around and you shoot things. However, in the style of of Lambier, who also did ridiculous fishing, uh, you there's a lot of customization to your plane. It's very simple and it's extremely over the top customization. So you can make you can make your engine a gungeon so that when you use your boost, it shoots bullets out the back of it. Or you can make it so that when you die, you just you you explode. Like you make your your uh, your fuselage a nuke. Sure, and you get points for everything, you, every you know, other jet you kill. Uh, what's interesting is whereas most shmups are kind of up and down, in this you're you're going around in a lot of circles, which makes piloting quite difficult, but also a lot of fun. I would I would say it's uh yeah it's it's a a little bit like Hotline Miami in a sense, in that there's that very much that uh, kind of kind of loose play style yeah. and very quick turnaround. You you will die, and then you'll be like, I want to yeah. get back in there. Hurry up. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and, and all these games, we were playing these on, on exclusively the Vita, but these are, for the most part, I think, cross-buy across at, at least... Cross-platforms, yeah. I know yeah. Uh, Hohokam is uh, for PS3, PS4, and Vita. So I'm not sure about Metrico. I would assume that it's probably a PS3 and PS4 title, but I'm not 100% sure. Probably yeah. It definitely seems like they are pushing the uh, the cross-platform thing quite quite a great deal. Uh, but yeah, there's it's, it's a good time to be a Vita owner. Tara, are you thinking about joining the Council of Twelve? You know what? I might, I might just have to. I'm getting a little tired of Animal Crossing. I'm not gonna lie. So. Oh, them, something new. Them is fighting words. Anyway, we are having a great time at PAX 2013. You guys should go and check out the rest of our coverage right here on Rev3 Games. I'm Max. I'm Tara. Good night, guys. So, do you like this preview coverage and you want to support Rev3 Games? Then why not check out Audible? They have over 100,000 audiobooks and spoken word entertainment to be downloaded to your phone or MP3 player and played back anywhere, anytime. You can go to audiblepodcast.com slash rev3games to get a free audiobook of your choice when you sign up today. We've still got a couple of months before the next-gen consoles are out, so why not pass the time with some audiobooks? Audible has over 100,000 audiobooks and spoken word entertainment in every genre that can be played back anywhere, anytime. You can get a free audiobook when you go to audiblepodcast.com slash rev3games. And best of all, every sign-up helps support the show.